In this lecture, let us discuss the discrete time systems in the frequency domain. So before we enter into this frequency domain analysis of discrete time systems, let us uh, recapitulate what we discussed uh, in the last lecture. Okay, so we had introduced uh, the topic in the last lecture. Okay, we uh, okay so in the last couple of lectures we had continued our uh, discussion on z transform and uh, z transform properties and uh, the properties that we specifically discussed uh, in the last couple of lectures were uh, <coughs> differentiation i am highlighting only important properties okay so the differentiation which gives you a clue to find the inverse transform of 1 divided by 1 minus alpha c inverse to the power k so whenever you have this type of functions then you can easily find out uh, its inverse z transform with the help of differentiation property where k is greater than or equal to 2 and then we discussed uh, the convolution property that is if you convolve g of n <coughs> with uh, h of n linear convolution then the z transform of this is simply the product of g of z and h z okay and then uh, <coughs> we discussed uh, modulation that is you take g of n multiply uh, uh, h of n so g of n times h of n in the z domain i mean in the frequency domain what is the z transform of uh, g of n times h of n it is going to be <coughs> 1 by 2 pi j um, in terms of you know integral integral containing a convolution right so if you write convolution then 1 over 2 pi j integral g of v h of z by v times z inverse dv okay so if you want to write then it is a convolution in the frequency domain and a particular case of the modulation theorem by the way this is modulation theorem okay so modulation a particular case of the modulation theorem in which uh, if uh, small g of n and uh, small h of n both are identical to each other then this leads to g of n mod squared and in the right hand side you will be this both you can combine okay and then that, that leads to Parseval's relationship for energy okay so if you take this case then we got Parseval's relationship and then we took uh, you know several examples one was illustrate uh, the fact that uh, v star of n take z transform then this is capital v star and z star and the other one involved uh, multiple poles okay we showed how to invert uh, with uh, multiple poles without a differentiation that is you write a set of linear equations in the constants by putting specific values of z and solve then this linear equation equations which is much simpler than differentiating and then putting the record value of z and then we illustrated the importance of signal e to the j omega n okay e to the power j omega n we said that uh, for an lta system <coughs> lta system e to the j omega n is called a eigen function an eigen function is any function such that when it is fed as the input to the system the output is exactly the same function e to the power j omega n multiplied by 
a complex constant. Here the complex constant is capital H e to the power j omega. Take modulus. So in our case this complex constant case was the DTFT of the impulse response of the linear time invariant discrete time system. Okay, and uh, this we denoted by capital H of e to the j omega. And in general, this capital H of e to the j omega is a complex constant in such a manner that uh, e to the j omega n fed to an LTA system whose impulse response is h of n is simply e to the j omega n multiplied by capital H of e to the <coughs> j omega, this constant. So this is a constant by the way. Okay. Now since it is a complex quantity, it is a complex quantity, I can write in terms of magnitude and phase e to the power j omega n capital H of e to the j omega times e to the j angle of h of e to the j omega. So this is your output y of n. And therefore if I know the response to e to the j omega n for this guy, then I know the response to cos omega n, I know sin omega n because this cos omega n sin omega n is a linear um, uh, is is um, cos omega n can be written in terms of this elementary function e to the j omega n plus e to the minus j omega n divided by 2 okay so once if i know the response of e to the j omega n then i am able to find out this uh, cos omega n and sin omega n because we are considering a linear system and if I take the real part of left hand side, I will get a uh, cos omega n. And similarly, if I take the real part of real part in the right hand side, then I will get the corresponding output. Okay. So when I take a real part in the left hand side, then I must take real part in the right hand side. If I take imaginary part in the left hand side, then I must take real imaginary part on the right hand side. Therefore, uh, this e to the j omega n is an extremely important signal for linear time invariant systems okay so that's it about the recap and now <clears throat> in fact we illustrated uh, the importance of this e to the j omega n um, by considering the example of an m point uh, moving average system right we showed that the magnitude response can be very easily calculated and uh, it is of the form sin divided by sin that we already did in the last class. But in determining the phase, one must be extremely careful to take care of and to take account of the sharp transitions in phase because there is an ambiguity in specifying the phase and there is no ambiguity in specifying the magnitude. Therefore, one must be careful and one must take care of Take, take the account of sharp transitions in phase by an amount exactly equal to 180 degree. That occurs whenever uh, the real quantity that is the ratio of sign changes, the ratio of signs changes sign. Therefore, the phase that you get with the m point moving average system is piece wise linear. Okay. It is a piecewise linear that is it is a straight line again again there is a 180 degree phase jump again straight line then 180 degree phase jump so this is there is a straight line therefore this is called a piecewise linear right after a certain point then there is a transition see it, it is slow you know linear function it is a linear function and there is a jump again linear function then there is a jump so that's why this is called a piecewise linear Okay, so the piecewise linear phase response. Okay, and um, you know this. You know whenever you have this kind of piecewise uh, linear phase response, then there is a you no know, ambiguity in phase response because one has to remember that 
this jump how much it is jumping this jump 180 degree face jump okay and one has to remember throughout your course on digital signal processing so whenever you have you know the piece wise linear face response and the ambiguity in the face response has to be remembered okay so when you get this kind of piece wise response linear linear face response then the ambiguity will occur in the face response therefore one has to be remem one has to remember throughout the course okay and this leads to the concept of filtering once we have come to the frequency response that is definition of frequency response now one can talk of filtering okay so in the last class we did know magnitude response and phase response in the magnitude response we plot frequency versus magnitude and phase response phase versus uh, sorry frequency versus phase that's what we did in the previous class now once we come to this you know frequency response then it is the high time to talk filters therefore let us talk about filters now a filter is an electrical device which uh, selects the appropriate frequencies and rejects others okay so this is my frequency axis it um, you know selects the appropriate uh, frequencies in this range let's say this is omega c minus omega c here it selects or passes and um, the highest point in the digital domain is pi you can't go up to infinity okay if you say infinity this is wrong it can't go minus infinity no it can go up to minus pi and in the past you said it is plus pi therefore this is the pass band and this is the stop band okay so we are uh, concerned with the magnitude of capital h of e to the j omega so this is my magnitude response in the discrete time domain systems okay if we plot the magnitude the frequency response that we want for uh, let's say an ideal low pass filter between some frequency omega c and minus omega c okay the magnitude should be ideally equal to 1 okay so this one is the normalized value so let us consider the magnitude is 1 here and beyond omega c the magnitude should be equal to 0 and here also the magnitude should be equal to 0 okay so 0 to omega c my magnitude is pi omega c to pi my magnitude is 1 from omega c to pi my magnitude is 0 okay then of course it extends in the negative side also in the same manner that is what we want is this is minus omega c and this is minus pi a constant magnitude between 0 to minus omega c which is 1 and minus omega c to minus pi which is 0 magnitude is 0 okay because you know for negative frequencies the magnitude is even and the angle is odd therefore if you know this positive part then we will be able to find out or we will be able to determine the negative part also okay this is an ideal you know low pass filter why is it ideal we will uh, you know address soon okay so this is ideal but what we have in practice is uh, something like this let me take only positive part to discuss instead of taking negative part zero and omega c this is ideal Okay. but what we uh, can have in practice is uh, something like this like this this is uh, pi this point is pi okay so it has to be 
rounded off and this one is called pass band and uh, let me come to the next value okay stop band and all those things okay so we can have something you know like this this is a practical curve in practice a smooth curve and therefore an approximation to the low pass filter characteristics okay this is an approximation to the low pass filter characteristics okay and within this rectangle okay within the rectangle does not have to be you know monotonic see this is monotonic curve it is monotonic sometimes no no need to be monotonic okay there can be some ripples okay so instead of you know monotonic like this i may have ripples like this in the pass band and then go like that or i i can have ripples in the stop band ripples means it can go up and down right similarly in the band in which you don't recover any frequencies it doesn't have to be monotonic it can also go up and down here also you may have ripples and here also you may have ripples or it can be a monotonic function like this a monotonic function monotonic means it uh, the slope is either negative or positive okay but the simplest of course is the monotonic function so this is the simplest one simplest magnitude of h of e to the j omega and here <clears throat> here we are not considering uh, the phase phase of capital h to the uh, e to the power uh, j omega we are not considering the phase we are considering only <coughs> magnitude and between you know minus pi and minus omega Mm. One second. And as I said, mm, if I look at the look at look at the low pass ideal low pass filter, this is omega c, and this is pi minus omega c. and minus pi then uh, <coughs> this minus pi to plus pi is our range of vision okay no need to look at uh, beyond uh, pi because it is a periodic function once you take the fourier transform discrete time fourier transform then it will be periodic so to realize um, you know low ideal low pass filter we need uh, you know both positive frequencies and negative frequencies we i mean we require negative frequencies as well as positive frequencies to make up a real signal right as we know that uh, i already mentioned uh, in in the signals and systems course this e to the j omega and e to the minus j omega these are all uh, you know contrived instruments these are all you know contrived instruments to facilitate our analysis design synthesis and making life uh, simpler in general okay so this is the ideal you know low pass filter <clears throat> so this characteristic is that of you know ideal low pass filter now an ideal low pass filter is uh, not realizable so that is why i have introduced this monotonic it is not realizable whenever you have you know this kind of you know ideal characteristics it is not realizable why there is uh, this is not realizable due to a philosophical reason and you no know, some other reason also let us see the philosophical reason see the philosophical reason is uh, nature avoids short transitions you know people who are highly temperamental they get angry very quickly the society the society doesn't uh, like them right they moderate them to an extent that they can be tolerated like you know we have seen sharp corners at intersection 
of the you know streets and roads for example like uh, the civil engineers make it uh, they are sharp corners but after a while uh, cyclists motor scooterists and the car owners they make sure that it gets rounded off so in the particular uh, you know case i especially in the ideal case under consideration there are uh, you know other more tractable and uh, analytical reasons one is that if i have a characteristics like this characteristics like this its impulse response h of n would be non causal non causal so how do you find the impulse response <clears throat> so impulse response how do you find it by taking the inverse discrete fourier transform it is 1 by 2 pi integral h of e to the j omega e to the j omega n and integrate with respect to omega so we are integrating with respect to omega and the range is our range of vision is what minus pi to plus pi so 1 over 2 pi integral of minus pi to plus pi in this range let me write down a to j omega e to the j omega n and d omega and this h of e to the j omega is equal to 1 between minus omega c and plus omega c then you can replace this minus pi by plus pi minus omega c to plus omega c and h of e to the j omega is 1 e to the j omega n and d omega okay and minus omega c to plus omega c is the range that we have to integrate okay so 1 over 2 pi integral h of capital h of e to the j omega e to the j omega n d omega and the limit is min don't put minus infinity make it minus pi to plus pi because it is periodic and now if you you know simplify this if you carry out this integration this is 1 over 2 pi then e to the j omega n divided by n and j n and the limit is minus omega c to plus omega c if you do this if you carry out this simplification then it is going to be sin n omega c divided by n times pi this is my h of n is equal to sin n omega c divided by n pi now when n is equal to 0 it blows up okay so it blows up <clears throat> will it blows up again no okay because at n is equal to 0 it is a uh, zero by zero form so therefore you apply el hospital rule and then at n is equal to 0 it is omega c by pi okay but this h of n obviously is not equal to 0 not is equal to 0 for n less than 0 okay it exists for n less than 0 and therefore if this is not is equal to 0 therefore the system is non causal if it is non causal the system is not realizable therefore the ideal low pass filter is not realizable okay <clears throat> and there is another reason why it cannot be realized one is it is not realizable and the another reason is that um, you know this h of n is neither absolutely summable and um, nor square summable okay in other words if it is neither absolutely summable and nor square summable then the system is unstable right so therefore it is unstable if it is unstable then how do you realize it 
okay well in stability doesn't require you know square summability so we don't want square summability but it is not absolutely summable okay for unstable for stable and unstable condition we need only absolute stability therefore um, summation of h of n magnitude is not less than infinity okay so therefore if you sum them up over the range then it blows up okay so they blows up and uh, it is not summable therefore it is also unstable once at least uh, in your life you should know why an ideal filter is not realizable and uh, this is uh, true not only for ideal low pass filter this is true for ideal band pass filter ideal band stop filter ideal band pass filter or any ideal kind of filter okay it is true that it is non causal and also unstable and therefore it cannot be realized so what we can realize is for the low pass filter for example our uh, range of vision, vision as i said fortunately minus pi to plus pi in digital signal processing if you consider only positive frequencies then our range of vision is 0 to pi it's a very fortunate thing in dsp in analog signal processing you need to look at from 0 to infinity but here our range of vision is very small 0 to pi right we have finite range of vision finite range of vision so when you are considering magnitude or phase it suffice size to consider only the positive frequencies and no need to consider the negative frequency because you know for negative frequencies the magnitude is even right once you know the you know behavior of the system for positive frequencies then i am able to construct for negative frequencies also because magnitude is even even and phase is odd so using this information i am able to con- determine or decide the uh, characteristics of the system for negative frequencies also therefore if i know the positive part then we know the other part also so that is why i am going to consider only the positive part let me take this is my ideal low pass filter okay so this is ideal and as i said what we can have in practice is something you know like this like that so it has to be rounded off okay this sharp cut this has to be rounded off okay so we can have you know something like this a smooth curve and therefore an approximation to the low pass filter characteristics okay this is the approximation to the low pass filter characteristics okay and for example the characteristic here within this rectangle this portion within this rectangle does not have to be you know monotonic here it is monotonic it is not necessarily be monotonic okay it can have ripples it can have ripples like this and like that so i can have ripples in the the pass band or i can have ripples monotonic in the pass band and ripples in the stop band monotonic in pass band and uh, ripples in the stop band <coughs> ripples means it goes up and down like this okay so similarly in the band in which you don't require any frequencies it does not have to be monotonic it can also go up and down in the stop band or it can go up and down in the pass band but the simplest of course is uh, 
this one this is the simplest one okay so monotonic in the pass band as well as in the stop band this is the simplest one <clears throat> and um, in this you know plot i am not considering the phase i have considered only the magnitude okay so the magnitude characteristic uh, simplest is that it is monotonic throughout frequency you see if it is an ideal characteristic ideal characteristic then omega c let me say omega c is the cutoff frequency okay so I, this is my ideal characteristic this is called a brick wall characteristics brick wall characteristic so now we define a cutoff frequency omega c as the frequency within which the magnitude look at this simplest curve the magnitude does not fall below a certain value let's say some quantity alpha okay so the cutoff frequency is the frequency within which the magnitude does not fall below let's say some quantity alpha therefore your h of j omega the magnitude of h of e to the j omega this is my magnitude does not fall alpha and it is of course less than 1 the mag maximum value is normalized value is 1 so this magnitude lies above alpha and uh, no less than 1 maybe less than or equal to 1 and uh, therefore omega c the cutoff frequency is defined as magnitude of h of e to the j omega lies between alpha and 1 and uh, you know alpha traditionally is taken as 0 0.707 okay so alpha is equal to o, um, no 0 0.707 that is 1 divided by square root of 2 so if you take logarithmic then this is going to be 20 times log of to the base 10 1 over root 2 which is minus 3 dB so under the usual parameter or usual characterization that we take is 3 decibels cutoff and what about this this line what is the value in decibel this is 1 so 20 log to the base 10 1 which is 0 dB therefore this horizontal line represents 0 dB so in magnitude 1 in dB it is 0 and this alpha is generally taken as 707.707 this is minus 3 dB minus 3 dB from one value okay up to this uh, you know this point the magnitude response does not fall by more than 3 dB okay so omega c is the 3 dB bandwidth of the low pass filter omega c is the 3 dB bandwidth of low pass filter 3 dB bandwidth okay so that means the width of the band within which the magnitude response does not deviate by more than 3 dB okay and that is called uh, the 3 dB bandwidth ideally we should have 0 dB okay so ideally if you take I should have 0 dB but ideal filter I cannot realize okay because this is unity transmission so 0 to omega c ideally I need 1 but that is not possible and this 0 to omega c is called a pass band omega c and then we have to define a stop band that is ideally I, this is my ideal condition ideally the stop band is I am sorry 
let's say this is uh, pi this is my stop band ideally but in practice this is not going to you know occur so uh, in ideal condition the pass band is 0 to omega c and uh, the stop band is omega c to pi however omega c to pi this range omega c to pi we cannot have zero response if you look at uh, you know see ideally i should have zero response right for ideal low pass filter i should have zero response but in practice this is not zero this is non zero it i'm sorry in practice it goes like this see in the stop band it is non zero okay so ideally omega c to pi i should have get zero magnitude response should be zero but in practice it is not equal to zero okay but in a monotonic response we have to define another constant beta see already i have defined a constant called alpha let us define one more constant maybe i'll draw the diagram here like this it is monotonically goes like that then this is omega c let me define this point omega s in draw a line and this is beta <coughs> so this is my monotonic response response now we have we have defined one more constant beta and uh, the edge of the stop band omega s such that between omega s and pi this is called a stop band the magnitude response does not go beyond beta let's say the beta value is going to be 0.001 this is 10 to the power minus 3 then in decibel it corresponds to 60 decibels down that means minus 60 db so typically what you will be specified is that in the stop band the attenuation must be at least 60 db if it is at least minus 60 db then your beta is 0 0.001 okay so therefore omega s will also be specified for example if it is a speech filter for digital telephony you might specify omega c and omega s where omega c is a normalized digital frequency so omega c may correspond omega c may correspond to um, let's say 3.3 .3 kilohertz or sometimes omega c may correspond to uh, sorry 3.3 .3, and omega s may correspond to 4 kilohertz and this 4 kilohertz and this pi represents 20 kilohertz okay this pi correspond to 20 kilohertz and this omega c may correspond to 3.3 uh, .3 kilohertz for digital telephony and this pi corresponds to 20 kilohertz omega s may correspond to 4 kilohertz and this 3.3 .3 to 4 kilohertz is called a, a transition band and this 4 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz is called a stop band okay so 0 to omega c pass band then omega omega c to omega s transition band or transition region and then omega s to pi is stop band the magnitude should not go above beta in the stop band okay and in the stop band it could be you know 60 db minus 60 db or minus 80 db then in between the region which unfortunately is a fact of life 
that is between omega c and uh, omega s it has to be permitted i cannot make it zero between omega s and zero okay so actually speaking it should come down like this it should be zero but in real life it's a fact of life okay we have to agree that therefore i cannot make it zero i have to slowly come down like this monotonically monotonically reduces because from omega c it cannot come to beta see this is my omega c i cannot come to beta value immediately okay it cannot make a abrupt jump right if it does then again non causality will step in okay whenever there is a abrupt jump then non causality will step in as i said nature avoids sharp transition so you must for allow a region a transition region okay you must allow this region okay and this region is called a, a transition region so transition region i mean trans why is it called transition region because it it uh, uh, it, it moves from the pass band to stop band transition between pass band and stop band that is why this is called a, a transition region <coughs> and now the next question is will the transition should be transition region would be narrower or broader this is pi let's say this is omega s and omega c if it is larger is it good or if it is short you know shorter is it good okay so the narrower the transition region the better is the filtering in case if it keep on goes like this that means in the stop band you are allowing unnecessary things unnecessary guys are passing through the filter but the moment you make it very small here then your omega s will come here so this is my omega s let me draw two curves here let me delete this let me draw two values see let me like this this is pi and let's say this is my beta value beta value now i have one more filter that filter monotonically reduces i'm sorry monotonically reduces like this and this is omega s1 first filter and this is omega s2 mm, filter 1 and filter 2 which is better filter 1 or filter 2 filter 2 is better why filter 1 allows unnecessary power in the stop band see this is unnecessary power unnecessary transmission i don't want strictly speaking this i should make it zero but this guy allows up to omega s1 very large um, from omega s2 omega s1 higher frequencies it is allowing but this omega s2 is much better because it allows up to this frequency and also the magnitude is lesser than the filter 1 therefore the narrower the transition region the better is the filtering so transition region sometimes is also specified by the cut off slope okay so the slope should be high as possible as okay so look at the slope here this slope is low and this slope is more so this is my cut off frequency at cut off frequency if the if the slope is more then it has narrower transition region okay therefore the slope is also an indication of how sharp the filtering is the more the cut off slope the better is the rejection of unwanted frequency so a digital filter in practice um, digital or analog it doesn't matter will have a pass band and uh, the pass band should be as narrow as possible sorry the trans i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm confusing the transition band as narrow as possible okay so it has pass band 
and this is transition band and this is my stop band <clears throat> therefore what uh, typically you will be specified is uh, the bandwidth of the pass band what is the bandwidth of the pass band the pass band tolerance so i can tolerate up to here pass band tolerance there is nothing sacred about a uh, 3 db you can choose 1 db also minus 1 db also it could be 1 db so in a more uh, sophisticated situation it could be 0.1 db also similarly you will be specified uh, the stop band and the minimum attenuation in the stop band so i will not uh, permit uh, you know um, the frequency component above certain magnitude <coughs> So if you over satisfy the stop band then you are perfectly all right you are a good buy but the transition region is a fact of life okay it has to be tolerated the narrower the transition region the better is the filter but then you have also to pay for uh, you know, any improvement that you desire that is the sharper cutoff. Okay, because sharper cutoff requires higher order filtering. So whenever you have you no know, sharper cutoff, then you, you you will be required to have second order or fourth order or fifth order like this. So fifth order, fourth order, sixth order means more number of components, more cost, more hardware, more software, and therefore more cost. So this is the concept of you know filtering how you achieve the um, um, you know transitions and uh, you know filtering and all okay so let me stop at this point in the next lecture we will uh, take an example so with this let me stop okay so in the next lecture we will take an example thank you very much